And I will be reading from the New International Version of, of the Bible. And it reads as follows. Starting with verse 1. The word of the Lord Almighty came to me. This is what Lord Almighty says. I'm very jealous of Zion. I'm burning with jealousy for her. This is the word, this is what the Lord says, and I will return to Zion and dwell in Jerusalem. Then Jerusalem will be called the faithful city, and the mountain of the Lord Almighty will be called the holy mountain. This is what the Lord Almighty says once again. Men and women of ripe old age will sit in the streets of Jerusalem, each of them with canes in hand because of their age. The city streets will be filled with boys and girls playing there. This is what the Lord Almighty says. It may seem marvelous to the remnant of the people at that time, and it will seem marvelous to me, declares the Lord Almighty. This is what the Lord Almighty says. I will save my people from the countries of the east and west. I will bring them back to live in Jerusalem, and then over in 11 it says, But now I will not deal with the remnant of the people as I did in the past, declares the Lord Almighty. Mm -hmm. The seed will grow well, the vine will yield its fruit, the ground will produce its crops, the heavens will drop their dew, and I will give all, all these things as an inheritance of the remnant of the people. Just as you, Judah and Israel, have been a curse amongst the nation, so I will save you, and you will be a blessing. Yeah. Do not be afraid, but let your hands be strong. Yeah. And in those last verses, starting with 14, it says, This is what the Lord Almighty says. Just I had determined to bring disaster on you, and showed you no pity when the ancestors angered me, says the Lord Almighty. So now I have determined to do good again to Jerusalem and Judah. Do not be afraid. Mm -hmm. These are the things you are to speak. Speak the truth to each other and render true and sound judgment in your courts. Do not plot evil against each other. And do not love to swear falsely. I hate all this, declares the Lord. Amen? Amen. Amen. God's word for God's people. Now, as we look at today's lessons review, we see that uh, Zechariah was a prophet who called for a return to God's people. He wanted them to return. It was a return of justice. Zechariah encouraged the people to turn from sin and focus on rebuilding the temple that was destroyed by the Babylonian invasion. Amen? And we see that God comes that once the temple was rebuilt, that he would dwell amongst the people. Uh, the vision that God gave Zephaniah described how Israel's enemies would be destroyed and blessings to Jerusalem that would then be restored. Yes. And so, in today's lesson, Zechariah's message was spoken to a small group of faithful believers who were referred to as the remnant because they were referred to this because they were among those who had returned to Jerusalem from captivity. Yes. Amen. So the prophet Zechariah proclaimed that when God returned prosperity to the land, Jerusalem then would be known as the faithful city. Yes. Amen. So let, and as we look at verse 2 in the text where it refers to God's jealousy, uh, let, me, let me just clarify that. God's jealousy here must not be confused. His jealousy here must not be compared 
with the sinful human jealousy that, that we experience every day. Because God loves his people. Yes. And, 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 and his, he is jealous against, not his people, but God is jealous against sin. Yes. Yes. And, and he's jealous against anything that is hurtful to his people. Yes. Yes. Amen. Yes. So in other words, student, God wants his people uh, to do what is right. Yes. And, and he wants us to make right choices. Mm -hmm. and, and how many of you know that the devil is busy out there yes. wanting us to make wrong yes. choices? Yes. God wants us to make right choices. He's not jealous of the person. He's jealous of the sin. So in today's lesson, uh, as we review verse 4 and 5, we see that uh, during troubled times, uh, you notice that the elderly people and the children were usually the ones who suffered the most. Uh, Zechariah described the scene where the elderly and the children would be visible in the streets, visiting each other and playing. Amen. Yes. We need to do more of that with our elderly today. Give them the detention that they so rightly deserve. And, and this was a sign of restored prosperity. Amen. Yes. Yes. Uh, Zechariah encouraged the people to believe that God would fully restore them. And that prosperity would again be visible throughout all the land. Yes. In some circumstances, in some situations, uh, such as what's going on today, has a tendency to cause us to lose hope. Amen? Yes. When we lose hope, guess what? We lose connection with God. Yes, sir. And so Zechariah urges the people to stay focused. And, and he urges the people to continue to build that temple, knowing that God would be with them and his favor would be upon them once that task was complete. Mm -hmm. and, and how many of you know that God is going to always do his part? Yes. He's going to always do his part. And, and God did his part to uh, reestablish Jerusalem. And, and just as God does his part, he commands us to do our part. Yes. And so as we, as we review those final verses in today's lesson, it emphasizes how God wants us to live honestly and peaceful with, with each other. And he gave some examples in the lesson. We need to leave, live honestly and peaceful with each other by speaking nothing but the truth. Uh, we need to uh, always be fair. Uh, we need not do evil against each other. And, and one thing that he said, and I'm just going to play come out and say it, he said, stop lying. Stop lying. But God does not like these things, and neither should we. Amen. Uh, this is our lesson review, and uh, please pray this closing prayer with me. Amen. Dear God, as we prepare ourselves for the new day, the new day that you promised, we commit by the aid of the Holy Spirit to live out your expectations for righteous living before you and righteous living before others. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. And as we prepare our hearts and as we prepare our minds for the word on high that we will be receiving from the Lord through our pastor, Amy Lewis, I'm reminded that today's lesson that in our world today, there's so much evil. Uh, yeah. We see that evil yes. is present yes. on a daily basis. Yes. But as believers, students, we must continue to pray without ceasing yes. and encourage one another that God will bring justice, that God will bring healing yes. 
yes, to this dying land. Amen? Yes, yes. And may God continue to richly bless each and every one of you is my prayer. She shall rejoice in time to come. 
She opened her mouth with wisdom, and her tongue is the law of kindness. She looked well to the ways of her household, and he did not the bread of idleness. Her children arise up and call her blessed. Her husband also, and he praiseth her. Many daughters have done virtuously, yes. but thou excellest them all. Favor is deceitful, and beauty is vain. But a woman that fear the Lord, she shall be praised. Mm -hmm. Give her of the fruit of her hands, yes. and let her own works praise her in the gates. God's word for God's people. Amen. Thank you. 
again, we'd like to say good morning. And the first thing, of course, we want to say Happy Mother's Day to all of our mothers, all of our caretakers. We thank God for the second Sunday in May. Sunday that is observed as Mother's Day. We pray that all will be prayerful for all of our mothers and thank God for them and how God has used them, is using them and then give God the glory. We want to thank our superintendent Sharing with us Amen. a review and overview of our Amen. Sunday school lesson. Amen. We want to thank our praise ministry Glory. for blessing us. Amen. Brother Mosley, prayer. Glory. And most of all, thank God for this opportunity. Amen. I encourage all of us to continue to be careful, to continue to be mindful, to continue to exercise common sense and being safe. God is in the blessing business, yes, sir. but we do want to use the sense that God has given us Amen. and stay safe. Yes, yes. For a few minutes, this morning, we'd like to call your attention to the passage in the New Testament, the Lord's Gospel, as recorded by John, uh -huh. the 19th chapter. We'll especially be reading verses 25 through 27. John, 19th chapter, verses 25 through 27. You, where you have the Bible or technology where you may see, you should find these words. Now there stood by the cross of Jesus, his mother and his mother's sister, Mary, the wife of Cleophas, and Mary Magdalene. When Jesus therefore saw his mother and the disciples standing by, whom he loved, he said unto his mother, Woman, behold thy son. Uh -huh. Then said he to the disciple, Behold thy mother. And from that hour, that disciple took her unto his own home. Mm -hmm. Our emphasis for a few minutes, the transfer at the crucifixion. Amen. The transfer at the crucifixion. All right. All right. Amen. John, the gospel writer, that's credited with writing this particular gospel. The theme of the gospel of John is Christ in his deity. Mm -hmm. And this 19th chapter starts with Jesus being crowned with thorns. Yeah. And then we'll see Pilate makes a final effort to release him. And when you continue to read and starting at the 16th verse, Jesus is crucified. All right. After being crucified, you continue the rest of the chapter, events following his death, and then he is buried. But in our text verses, mm -hmm. while on the cross, Christ uttered seven final sayings, and John records three of them. Mm -hmm. The first one it is about transform transferring the care of Mary, his mother, to the apostle John. So 
So the first thing I want to emphasize, and normally it's just three things, but I have several things I want to emphasize quickly. All right. And the first thing that we see in this text is the selflessness in the transfer. It is most significant that the first three of the seven sayings by Christ on the cross all had to do with the needs of others. I'll say the first three sayings on the cross all had to do with the needs of others. When we are suffering in great agony as Christ was on the cross, it is very difficult to think about others when we are in agony. Mm -hmm. But Christ gave us a better example. In spite of his great suffering, he thought of the needs of others and did what he could to alleviate those needs. I know sometimes because of what we are going through now, it's not easy to think about the needs of others. But I read the best bond for pain and sorrow is to minister to others. If you want to take your mind off of your pain, Help somebody with their pain. Yes, and when you help somebody with their pain, it'll help you take your mind off of your pain. Yes, sir. Secondly, we look at the suffering for the transfer. In the 26th verse, that he said unto his mother woman, Behold thou son. Mm -hmm. When the angel Gabriel visited Mary to announce that she would be the mother of our Lord. He said she was highly favored. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. She was highly favored of God. And that's in Luke 1, verse 28. However, this did not exempt her from some earthly suffering. She was highly favored, yes. but she still had to suffer some things. Yes, sir. In fact, the more one is favored by heaven, the more one may have to suffer on this earth. Why? Because Satan hates those who are favored by heaven. That's right. If you wonder sometimes why you're being attacked, if you wonder why you're going through yes, something, if you wonder why Satan won't leave you alone, it may be a good sign that you're favored by heaven. Because if you're favored by heaven, Satan despises you. Thirdly, the sovereignty in the transfer. He said, Woman, behold thou son. In that 26th verse, you see, Christ is, at this point, Christ is sovereign over Mary. He tells her what to do. She at this point does not tell him, but he tells her. Uh -huh. She had raised him as her son. Yes, sir. And I'm sure as a child she told him what to do. Yes, but it's at this point on Calvary, she doesn't tell him. Mm -hmm. He tells yes, her yes, the sovereignty of the transfer. And then we see the support right. and the transfer. He said to the disciples, Behold, Behold. thou mother. Hmm. The disciple was the apostle John, whose habit is not to name himself, but to refer to himself humbly in a third person way. When John refers to himself in the gospel that he wrote, he does not name himself. He refers to himself as the third person in that way. As we, looking at this, we see he's providing for Mary was an act that honored the institution of the home. Even a 
amidst his agony on the cross, Christ gave honor to the home. Yeah. Honor is still given to the home. And I think sometimes we forget that God started with the home. That's right. uh -huh. The home existed before the church. That's right. That was the first establishment, the family and the home. That's right. Now, I know that we're having problems and there are domestic issues that's stemming from us having to be at home. But God is bringing us back to where we started from. And he started in the home. Now we're having to spend time in the home. And I believe that if we spend enough time in the home, we'll appreciate what God does in the home as well as what he does outside of the home. And then the last thing I see in this text, the service in the transfer. The service in the transfer. Telling John to care for Mary is a good illustration of Christian service. First of all, the selected service. Christ had four brothers and at least two half-sisters. You can read that in Matthew, the 13th chapter, verses 55 and 56. Yet they were not asked to care for Mary. Why? The answer is that they were not devoted to Christ as was the Apostle John. All right. At that moment, none of his half-brothers believed in him as the Christ. It was only after the resurrection that they believed. Mm -hmm. And you can read that in John 7, verse 5, and Acts 1, verse 14. Selection for service depends much on one's devotion to Christ. I need to say this, that a lot of times we wonder why some are asked to do some things in serving the Lord. We need to ask ourselves, have I committed myself enough for him to have me to do it? Do you not know that when you submit yourself, God has something for you to do? If you want to be used, then you have to submit yourself. Yes, and the submission for service, and that verse 27 said, From that hour that the disciple took her unto his own home, from the moment that Jesus said, Behold thy mother, mm -hmm. from that moment John agreed to take care of Mary. Jesus was leaving, but he would not leave until he made sure his mother was taken care of. Service requires submission. Yes, sir. The better the submission, the better the service. Yes, John submitted immediately. That's the right way to obey Christ's orders. A lot of times he's urging us to do something and we like to put it off. But I come to tell you, when the Holy Spirit urges you to do something, that's the time to do it. A lot of times we miss a blessing because we want to wait to our convenience to do what the Holy Spirit is telling us to do. The sacrifice for the service. This would require extra care. If you would be of service to God, you must learn to sacrifice for God. We're some, there are some things we're having to sacrifice right now. There are some things we're having to go through right now. Yeah. But it does not mean that we can't serve him. As we observe this Mother's Day, we need to remember that God is still in control. Yes. And did you not know that God has a reason for everything that he does or he allowed to be done? Yes. 
at the crucifixion. It's in this lesson. It's in this text. We see the selfishness lessness in the transfer. We see the sufferer. The sufferer for the transfer. We see the sovereignty in the transfer. We see the support in the transfer. Then we see the service in the transfer. That's why we find in our text now that stood by the cross of Jesus, his mother and his mother's sister, Mary, the wife of the office, and Mary Magdalene. And then he says that when Jesus therefore saw his mother and the disciples standing by whom he loved, he said unto his mother, Woman, behold thou son. Then said he to the disciple, Behold thou mother. And from that hour, that disciple took her into his own home. Jesus is still taking care of us. Jesus is still looking over us. But when I look at the transfer at the crucifixion, I look at the rest of those scriptures and it said that out of this, Jesus knowing that all things were now accomplished, that the scripture might be fulfilled, he said, I first. And now thou wast set a vessel full of benefit. They filled the spawn with benefit, put it up on a hyssop, and put it in his mouth. And when Jesus therefore had received the benefit, he said, It is finished. And the Bible says he bowed his head and he gave up the ghost. I'm glad he gave up the ghost. Yes. That who's 
ever believing in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. He's in the same business right now. Just believe. Give it to him right now.